Welcome to Optimize 24, the thought leadership event for Aspen Tech. We have with us Mario Zuckerberg, who is the Director of Business Technology Organization at Tenet. Mario, welcome. Nice to be here. Great to have you here. So to, to color our vision for, for this conversation to proceed, give us, a, give us a flavor of your role at your company and a bit of your company's profile. Yeah, I'm uh, the Director of Business Technology, so responsible uh, for, for the IT, data, and digital transformation within uh, Tenet. Tenet is a transmission uh, operator in the Netherlands and in uh, Germany. We have roughly uh, 8,000 uh, people, uh, an investment portfolio of 8 billion uh, euros uh, every year. And that's really growing fast because yeah, the energy transition is happening now. And there's uh, exciting times in, uh, in our organization. I think uh, at such a critical time, organizations, companies such as yourself are, are facing certain, certain critical issues, certain things that you need to address for the net zero horizon. So, Give us a flavor of how you're approaching the clean energy transition within your corridors. What sort of grid reliability and resi resiliency issues that you are having to face uh, and how are you approaching that horizon? Yeah, if you look at, uh, at the past, uh, we are really a grid operator in the Netherlands and one third in, uh, in Germany. Uh, our availability CF figures, uh, that always keep the lights on, are 99.99963. But you see with, with the introduction of all the new renewables, uh, so the the wind farms uh, in, uh, in the sea, uh, solar panel parks uh, and consumers, uh, prosumers who are uh, installing heat pumps, electrical vehicles, charging poles, those kind of things. You see that it is a challenge to keep up that availability in, uh, in our grid and also make all the connections that we need, for example, the offshore uh, windmill farms. If you, if you look at some of the, the issues, the, the pressing concerns that are uh, coming in your uh, intray, you look at your operations and you do a cross operations examination. Give us, a, give us an idea of what your partnership with Aspen Tech is like in terms of grid management. Yeah, we are of course replacing our uh, power management and transmission uh, systems, so our SCADA uh, systems. Uh, so we, we have now a partnership with, uh, with Aspen Tech OSI. Uh, we are now live with our uh, uh, power management systems and October next year we will go live with our transmission uh, systems. For and they are in our core of our mission critical uh, infrastructure. Sure. For your operations as they stand, uh, give us an idea of some of the critical challenges uh, that operations such as yourselves are facing. Yeah, that is especially uh, uh, if you connect uh, wind farms, yeah, they only deliver energy of course when there is wind. That means that you have to balance all kinds of uh, renewable resources in your network. And that you have to do, of course, with, with more and more IT. Uh, so data is really key for us. So you see in the, in the past, one of our offshore locations had just maybe 100 uh, signals. Nowadays, it's more than uh, a few thousand uh, signals every uh, minute. And that's all that information you can gather and you can with all kinds of algorithms uh, define what, what's the best uh, operational approach. See, the criticality of grid management for building resiliency uh, are such pressing concerns. And in that context, how big an enabler is, is digitalization and technology, and how are you integrating uh, renewables into, into your wider infrastructure? Yeah, normally you had just gas power plants uh, were delivering power to our grid. That was easy to handle. Now you have a microgrid where you see all kinds of uh, production uh, take place everywhere in your grid. So upstream, downstream, etc. And you have to manage that. You can't, you, you can't do that without digitalization. So that means you need digital twins of your infrastructure. You need AI models to really have the algorithms in place to see where it is busy on the, on the grid. Uh, so congestion management, we call it, is really important to manage, uh, to manage that one. We have so far in this conversation discussed some of the some of the challenges, some of the, the technological solutions that you're deploying in conjunction with Aspen Tech to overcome those challenges and, and to perhaps enhance your, your efficiencies and your optimization levels. But let's ask let's strike a note of positivity and, and query of you that as an operator in Northern Europe, what kind of opportunities does, does a re renewables landscape bring for your company? It really means that we can uh, uh, contribute to, to a better world. The whole energy transition is all about renewables. And we are an enabler to do that. Eh? So we can integrate all those windmill farms, solar panel parks, etc., etc., hydrogen in the future into our grid. 
so that that's our purpose uh, that we are uh, driving. We have, we have spoken about solutions. We, we have spoken about challenges. We have spoken about how you are approaching things. Where does all of this, especially the the, the grid management aspect of it, sit in your wider business model and how you're, you're how you're looking towards the future? The grid delivers power to uh, indirect 45 million uh, people in uh, in our area, so it's really uh, impactful. Uh, uh, and in the end, uh, the whole energy transition is is done for those 45 million uh, people. So it has direct impact in our business model. See, for those looking outside in into the TSO world and and, and trying to to have a have some kind of sense of what challenges you face. Give us, give us some color that what kind of uh, you know, issues that control rooms at TSOs and DSOs are likely to face uh, in the approaching horizon. Let's not go too far, but perhaps in the next five, ten years. Yeah, especially uh, having the microgrid fully operational and that we really can handle the, the, the whole energy transition uh, yeah, with wind, with sun. Uh, what, what's the effect on, uh, on our grid? How can we make sure that we still keep up the 99.9963 availability? Those kind of things are really important. And for that, you really need systems like, like SCADA, who are really rock solid, uh, but are also open uh, to, uh, to all the new developments that you need with all the new data points you have in your, uh, in your grid, where you, on top of that, with all AI uh, kind of tools, machine learning kind of tools, really uh, have a, a digital copy of your total grid and, and make that happen uh, and, and the effect you will see directly in your control room because the, the systems will give you a suggestion what to do uh, based on all those data and in the end it still is the operator who is responsible for making the decisions but the, the digital twins will help them in, in making the, the best decisions. You've spoken about the technological solutions, uh, the problems to some of the, the issues that you're facing in the deployment of digitalization to overcome those problems. I, I would like to ask you a macro question as well, Mario, in terms of your company. So in terms of your, your near-term ambitions and your longer-term ambitions, uh, what are we looking at here? So let's start with the near-term first, followed by the long-term. Uh, in the near-term is, is really uh, two, two things, uh, that's build, build, build. We really have to extend our grid uh, to all, uh, for all the renewables. That's, that's really important. The second one is we have to connect customers. Uh, there are now customers in the queue because we, we need to have the grid extension. And they are really pushing now uh, fairly that, that they want to be on the grid with more power because they want to get rid of the national gas and move to, uh, to, to electricity. So that's more for the near term. For the long term, it's also about affordability. Uh, because in the end, the oil industry also costs some money. Uh, and it will land uh, in the end in the, in, uh, on, on, on the bill of the 45 million end customers. Uh, so we also have an, uh, um, an obligation to, to manage that well. And eyeing this future, uh, you know, in terms of optimizing your operations, in terms of firming up your, your bottom line and improving not just profitability, but I guess profitability in conjunction with, uh, with emissions and a sustainable future, uh, where does, uh, does your collaboration and co-innovation with Aspen Tech uh, sit in terms of how you envision the next, uh, next decade? Yeah, what you see with Aspen Tech is that they have 30 years experience in, uh, mainly in the oil and gas uh, industry. They are now entering into the utility uh, industry. It's a little bit different, uh, but you, you see that, that there are also similar similarities and we really can speed up uh, together. Uh, so that partnership is really important, not only with Aspen Tech, but in the whole ecosystem, uh, because the, the grid uh, it doesn't stop after the border of the Netherlands or the border of, of Germany. Uh, so the, the European grid is, is one grid. Uh, so you need more partnerships with also other companies. And together, we have to, uh, to face the challenges. Mario, it's been a fascinating conversation. Thank you for uh, providing us with a pan-European flavor in terms of the complexities that your organization faces. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. That's uh, Mario Sirkebeck, who is the Director of Business Technology Organization at Tenet.